16 guests and three catering hall staff got sick from Shigella SPP. With a few days, they all showed the same symptoms, which was stomach cramps, fever, and diarrhea. Three of them ended up in the emergency room. After an investigation, it came out that the outbreak was caused by the lead cook who had prepared the food that was served at the lunch. He wasn't feeling well that morning of the luncheon and failed to wash his hands several times. That is fucking gross. Anyways, the catering hall's management worked with local regulator authorities to change procedure for dealing with employee illness as well as implementing new trading protocols for hand washing. What we have for chapter 2.0, it is forms of contamination and it opens with a case study. Illnesses like this can be prevented through understanding how pathogens contaminate food, as well as knowledge on how to prevent physical and chemical contamination. So in the last video, I covered the three types of contamination, which was biological, chemical, and physical. If you jumped into this video and you need to learn more about that, I suggest starting from the first chapter. Part of the manager's job is to prevent any of these three types of contaminants from getting into the food. Contamination by any of these items can cause foodborne illness or even physically harm the guest. Food can be contaminated on purpose, but a large majority of contamination actually happens on accident, such as an employee being in a rush and not washing their hands and then getting doo-doo all over the food and the utensils and everybody and shaking your hands and now your hands have doo-doo on it and whatever. SurfSafe literally makes this example, which is why I included it, except they say the fecal oral route, but doo-doo is just fun to say. Contamination can also pass in one of these three ways. The first is from person to person, through sneezing or vomiting on food or food contact surfaces, and from touching dirty food contact surfaces or equipment than touching the food. Again, the example of vomiting onto food is in chapter two. It's literally written in there. What's scary is the fact that they need to specifically state that vomiting onto food can get people sick tells me that this happens more frequently than I care to think about because I actually eat out too. And that's honestly just really freaking gross. Please do not puke on my food. Now, a more likely way that food can be contaminated is through cross contamination. Examples would be someone using a cutting board for chicken and not cleaning it correctly. Then that board is then used for cutting cooked food or vegetables or something like that. Which this actually brings us to the subject of biological contamination as a whole. Harmful microorganisms are called pathogens. Some pathogens make you sick when eating them. Other pathogens don't make you sick on their own, but they produce poisons or toxins that make you sick. In order to prevent foodborne illness, we need to understand it. Know thy enemy. Everything that I'm talking about in every single one of these videos has the potential to be on the test. So just keep that in mind when you're watching the video. Take notes, rewatch them, look at the study questions that I provide in the description, and I guarantee that you are going to pass this at, by the time that I get all 10 chapters done. So right now there are four types of pathogens that can contaminate food and cause outbreaks. These four are bacteria, viruses, parasite, and fungi, including molds and yeast, but not cordyceps. According to the FDA, there are 40 kinds of bacteria, viruses, parasites, and mold that can occur in food and cause illness. Of these, six have been singled out by the FDA and dubbed the big six. Here are the big six. Shigella SPP, Salmonella typhi, non-typhoidal Salmonella, in parentheses NTS, non-typhoidal salmonella. Shigatoxin producing Escherichia, Escheri I'm probably butchering that, Escherichia S-T-E-C, it's E. coli, but it's, uh, I, I mean, I have it up there, you can see, you probably pronounce better than me, you guys are probably smarter than me anyway. Hepatitis A and norovirus. Memorize the big six, how they spread, and everything I ever say about them in this video series. Next, we're gonna cover uh, symptoms of foodborne illness. So these can vary depending on which illness a person actually has, but most victims of foodborne illness share a lot of the same symptoms, which are diarrhea, vomiting, fever, nausea, abdominal cramps, and possible jaundice or yellowing of the skin and eye. Personally, I feel like hep A would be the only one to cause jaundice, but it is in the list as common symptoms, so I'm going to include it because it may be important, it may show up on the test. Please remember, this is a non-exhaustive list. Symptoms can 
very widely. So focusing on bacteria specifically, we know that most bacteria share four common traits, and I want you to take note of these. Location. Bacteria can be found almost everywhere, including in and on our bodies. Some bacteria keep us healthy, but others will make us sick. Detection. Bacteria itself can't be seen, smelled, or tasted. Growth. Bacteria need six conditions to grow. You can remember these by remembering that Tom is fat. We call him Fat Tom. If Fat Tom is around, bacteria will probably be around too. Fat Tom is extremely important to the test. Fat Tom shows up quite a bit. And if you want to know everything there is to know about Fat Tom, click on the video that should be showing up right about now. The last of the four is prevention. The most important way to prevent bacteria from causing foodborne illness is to control time and temperature. 2.1 is going to cover Fat Tom, which should be popping up right about now. I hope you guys are finding the video Videos informative. I believe thoroughly in keeping people safe and getting as many people to be able to pass their serve safe manager test as well. I believe strongly that line cooks deserve every opportunity to move up in the ranks and we all don't have $70 to blow on a serve safe manager test and sometimes classes can run weeks and weeks and weeks. This way you can just binge it in your car. But otherwise you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.